hello, welcome to the Africa podcast, a podcast where we discuss matters concerning youth, we as a country, as a people, as a society. And in today's studio, we have a very special guest, Moheshi Mbiwa Tabida, Rachel Tabida. Uh, she's going to tell us more about herself, what she does, we get to know her on a personal level and on a professional level. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. I'm your host, Diana Moshai. Madam. How are you doing? I'm fine, Diana. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so excited to see you and finally to meet you. It's I my have pleasure. I've stalked you. Hey. Hey. <laughs> You've been stalking me. I've been stalking you. Mm-hmm. And I'm so proud uh, to see you as a young person in leadership. I appreciate that very much and the way you're inspiring us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um. Thank you so much, Diana, for having me here today. You're um. So you've been stalking me and you still want to know more about me and you mean you haven't got enough <laughs> from the social media <laughs> you know, and uh, what you see on social media is not actually like the real thing mm-hmm. so me and our audience mm-hmm. want to know you from your mouth mm-hmm. yeah. okay uh so my name is rachel tabitha so maybe those who don't know me uh, i'm a youth leader a national youth leader uh, doubling as a student leader, but again at national level, the current deputy president for the um, Kenya University Students Organization. Uh, I am a youth leader who runs a couple of organizations for the youth. Uh, professionally, I'm a journalist by profession. Uh, that's mass communication and journalism. Uh, yeah, at least there uh, you, you know a bit about me but passionate about leadership and governance. Oh, okay. yeah. That's actually very awesome. Uh, so my first question is, what inspired you to pursue leadership? Uh, and I know when you're doing journalism, you get to meet people <coughs> leadership at least a little bit much of time, you know, to interact with them. So what inspired you? And at what age did you realize that I want to be a leader? I want to do this thing. Uh, well, um, a couple of things inspired me into leadership, but really not a role model or something, but the challenges and the gaps in leadership. I felt there were challenges, so there were gaps that I could feel better given an opportunity. And my inspiration to leadership was as a result of uh, a feeling that there is a gap that I can fill with my with 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 given an opportunity i would feel such gaps better for the youth and for the women so basically i was inspired by the challenges and the gaps in the leadership okay and then i was like let me fill in these gaps i feel i can do well if given an opportunity even not given an opportunity i feel i'll find the opportunity and i'll fill the gaps and then you asked again at what age so I mean, um, I think twenty years old. That is when I I at twenty one. That's when I vied for Kuso president. So if you check, if you stop well, you'll find on my Instagram. You'll find that and I have some posters there for Tabi for Kuso president. Kuso, the Kenya University Students Organization. I was twenty two. So I was running for the Kuso presidency, and fortunately, I became the deputy for some reasons, but had. The, the, the influence had gone pretty well across the country, across learning institutions. And I was like, oh, wow, this is now a good starting point for me. Because you see in leadership, more also in politics, you must have a starting point. So the student leadership, KUSO to be specific, was my starting point. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, You're saying about the gaps that you saw that they were missing for women to fill. Would you like to tell us what are uh, those gaps that you think like women need to fill? Those gaps? Um. By then, uh, for the gaps we are more when it comes to students, we had issues in school. We had issues across other learning institutions. Uh, things were happening. Many challenges were there because since of uh since the dual bill was introduced, uh, it became a challenge a challenge for the students' activism to take place 
So you find that things could be happening and no one to advocate for them. Things could be happening and no one to talk about them. Things like ex um, expulsions in school, insecurity, uh, missing marks. Mm, what else? Uh, what else? Hygiene. Hygiene in schools. It was lacking in some schools. And then I realized it's not only in my school. Because for me, I've been in a private school. It's, it was a bit managed because that's a business. That's someone's business. But I could feel um, comrades from other institutions complaining, they're crying, but the cry does not see the, the, the light of the day. They just, it's like they're murmuring their problems. But then one of the gaps was that we need someone to stand in this position to amplify these challenges to the world, to amplify the, the, the challenges the students are going through beyond the school administration to the world. Because when the um, student activism was active, comrades could do uh, could protest and then get killed. they get whatever they are asking for. But since it was introduced, you try to protest, of course, you get expelled. And you see, um, there are things that even the school administration is not able to sort. Things like, let's say, insecurity. Insecurity could happen outside the school. I was like, even if I vie, I vie, I'll just be another silent student leader. I want a platform that I can amplify, I can say what I want as long as it's correct. And I can represent students beyond the school. So one of the gaps was a platform where we can use to amplify our challenges beyond the school. Um, nationally had not identified many gaps, but I had a feeling that women are still few in positions of leadership. So I was like to become also a woman in leadership in the nearest future. I have to start today. Now I have to align myself with the right, the proper channels of leadership for me to reach there. So that's how it, it was like as simple as that. And then I began my journey into leadership, yeah. So there's this question also been trying to think how do these people handle this when oh, I'm also a student. Mm -hmm. So when, mm -hmm. when you go out to protest mm -hmm. or maybe insecurity mm -hmm. and things happen in school, mm -hmm. we get that the government sent police. Yeah. And unfortunately some of the students die. Mm -hmm. So you as a deputy Mm -hmm. or vice chair lady mm -hmm. are in Kuso. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Uh, you, you, you know, constitutionally, there is uh, the right to picket and protest, but when you're not uh, listened to, you know. So sometimes, you know, before students uh, protest, they go the diplomatic way of involving the school administration or whoever is supposed to sort the issue. But now it is when they are not listened to when now they, are, they, they decide to come out and protest. But now before they protest, they have to notify the OCS around that we'll be protesting tomorrow and it's gonna be peaceful, please provide us with security. Because whenever there are protests, we're supposed to be provided with security to ensure peace and order. Actually, they're supposed to come to ensure that the comrades are safe, you get. But now sometimes it might turn out to be aggressive protest, you know, and then police would now, uh, which I I highly uh, I highly oppose or I highly feel like okay I don't know how to put this, but sometimes police instead of uh, using um, rubber bullets or tear gas to disperse the students, they resort to life bullets, which is something very bad, very bad, actually very bad because a comrade is a, an armed person. A comrade just an innocent person who's just the, the the worst they could they can do is just throwing stones. I don't think a comrade who's just throwing stones should be addressed in such a way that should be dealt with like an al shabab, like you know, with a bullet. So when such happen, it 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 again um makes the students more aggressive again to keep on marching, protesting, and now destroying property around, which is not also 
a good thing so because of the the, the, the life bullet and all that it made students fear for their life it scared away the student activist and made them coil back to now dying with the problems because when they come out to express their problems they are maybe killed so it's an issue we're still debating we've tabled a, a, co- a couple of uh, petitions in parliament to ensure the dual bill is scrapped to allow the activism back and students to vote strong leaders the universal suffrage where comrades can vote the president they want because you know if we are the ones to vote whoever we want or them they will get a strong leader who can even advocate for their challenges and you know and then you find there is no need to go to protest because we had a leader who could sort this out you find like for now for them to go out it's because they have weak leaders who are just puppets of the administration so when they take a problem to the administration it's not even handled in the, the right way so if the dual bill is brought back that is our approach as at now the dual bill to be scrapped i mean to be to be scrapped off so that we could now they could get the freedom because for us as we exiting the students and all that to not graduate to national politics we don't want to leave the comrades upcoming comrades in a mess that we could have sorted when we are there a strong leader student leaders yeah the same problem that you face yeah then yeah we'll to, to face it and it's gonna be worse for them if for us we can't do it then how about them who do not even understand <laughs> what is it that that happened you know mm-hmm. for us we can relate we've seen babu we've seen him uh being uh the student activism you know he's yeah. the master of the student activism so at least we've seen babu do it and we can feel the impact but now they I, i'm sure they did that they they introduced the bill to make sure he's uh, managed because he was doing it i know he, yeah. you know but now you see it has trickled down to affect cc and the upcoming yeah yeah no that's the power uh, women come ready <laughs> yeah. so at this position that you are in we would like to know what what have you accomplished so far mm-hmm. and what that's one thing that's the first milestone that I'm like wow i really get this and i'm so proud of this well um i think i got i got an odm nomination but it flopped <laughs> it flopped badly uh-huh. i think it was a milestone what were you nominated for mca to yeah. yeah and also another milestone i i was able to to work for the former prime minister mm-hmm. at the the presidential secretariat campaign mm-hmm. secretariat mm-hmm. so seated there i felt it was another milestone especially for someone like him yeah mm, what other milestone i've done a lot of things so i'm trying to get the the best mm. out of this also another milestone i've been able to get national influence mm-hmm. uh in whatever county whatever county in kenya if you go there and shout my name my name you might find one or two youth know me because of the impact mm-hmm. not just through the campaigns and mandamano but also how i've been able to manage them at county level so i feel also getting the um, the national influence at this time it's a it's it's, it's a milestone yeah yeah so, yeah that. thank you and then actually you are a member of um movement of democratic defense mm-hmm. what is that just your baba oh what yeah do you, do there? you know uh once the election was contacted it went how it went we felt like uh from a biased point of view we felt like the election was rigged it was manipulated and you know even if ruto got whatever votes mm-hmm. and baba got whatever votes mm-hmm. still the people who voted for baba cannot be outlooked those are people who voted for him and they are there and they felt dull they felt this thing has not gone well whatever whether it went well or not they feel it never went well and so we had to stand in a position we as the azimio people to do our research to find out was this legit or were the results manipulated or not 
and if they were manipulated how do i how do we access the right statistics to 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 argue from a point of research or from a point of statistics and that data you know that so as me sponsored some statistics research on the results and they came out with a report that baba had won the election and that's why the majority were affected so quickly we thought of um, because our democracy is everything we have to address the issue of transparency in IBC yeah. because um transparency fairness and and access access to the elections results for the future because that falls under democracy but then it happened as we are doing that the cost of living went a bit high so it became another issue and then we got another issue of youth crying for employment so we had issues kept piling and now we came with the election rigging and manipulation we got high cost of living we got youth unemployment and things kept coming coming so we were like how do we address these issues at, as the youth so as youth like minded youth who are top nationals we came up with an idea of coming up with a movement for our democracy for the defense of our democracy that's mdd and we said we're going for war for war to protect our democracy because even even when you check the history of our country there were people like mau mau <laughs> they fought for independence we got um saba saba they fought for the that and they, they were fought, fighting for constitution or something but if you check things like democracy uh independence was fought for uh const new constitution was fought for uh multipartism was fought for and baba was a key player in all those so we felt Baba again, Raila Odinga is again the right person to align with when it comes to fights. Mm -hmm. Anything fight for democracy, fight for what? Mm -hmm. He is the right candidate for us. So we went with Baba. Okay. That's why we are with him. We, we are the youth with him because he's been constantly fighting and want to keep the fight because this fight has to proceed. It's progressive. Mm -hmm. As our fathers retire from the war, we take, we, we take over and we have to learn from them before they say now it's upon you to take over at a city to make choke at and move because we have we, been fighting so we felt we can come in the position to fight for this uh, abc transparency because even for you let's say you want to run for office tomorrow somewhere around the langata you get you know it will it will not it will discourage you having a feeling that so and so will rig yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the numbers, I have the right agenda, I have the right manifesto, but I'm very sure my opponent will rig. But because you want to be a transparent person, you don't want to rig. You just back off. You know? Yeah. And that's how we lose great leaders. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. I know it's good to gender equality mm -hmm. um, and empowerment. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, um, like, um, what's what's this that women face in leadership or the challenges that you feel like women face when it comes to leadership positions in kenya mm -hmm. um, more specifically let's say political leadership uh -huh. the challenges you as a woman mm -hmm. um i think first of all the challenges that women face are just as the challenges that men face could be intense uh but i don't I, I don't like it when women pick the gender card mm -hmm. like this this happened because i'm, I'm a woman because i believe before you get ready for a battlefield where you have to compete with men you should be prepared come rain come sun whether i have to be now that they are man it has to go down you know but there are a couple of um, challenges that now biologically as women we cannot avoid we cannot just run away from so um, of the challenges now should it be for women or just for me what i faced or just i say first for women okay when you're in that position mm -hmm. leadership you are able to absorb other women oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. who also wants to be leaders mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like 
uh, sometimes maybe they feel they were sidelined mm-hmm. with the women. Maybe you want to get a nomination mm-hmm. and then you're told, okay, you can do this your woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, let another man do this. He's more capable. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like they go through that? Um, yes, they do. Mm-hmm. They do. But some challenges happen when someone allows them to happen. Because if you stand strong, even a man will be scared to replace you. But again, uh, culture-wise, women we are, women are kind of cushioned to be uh, <laughs> caretakers, caretakers of a home. Yeah. You get. I'm lacking a better word for this, but there there is a way they they try to make like a woman supposed to a woman's place is the bedroom, kitchen, and just home. Children, Children you know. There's a better word for this. No, I don't know in Napotea. Mm-hmm. So, and biologically as a woman, you cannot avoid that as much. Because at the end of the day, you have to give birth. <laughs> you have to look after the children. Because that's the African woman. Now, this African woman now wants to join leadership and still perform her duties at home. Look after the husband. I don't know why they are, they are supposed to be looked after, but it's that it is what it is. So look after the husband, look after the children, um, children, and take care of the home. And again, come out here, look after the society, take care of our society. You see. So I think the balance, the balance for the women is a bit a challenge, because you know you could get worn out. In the middle of trying to catch up, balancing both. Again, uh, we're living in a man's kind of society. A man who feels a woman still should be a woman. I don't want to repeat that, that but should be a woman, you understand? Mm-hmm. So a woman finding a space in a competitive world of men, because men have already established themselves. themselves. If you go into politics, you find... 80% are men. Mm. If you go to business world, you find 80% are men. Because they've, they've, they've been growing. While we are back at home cooking and giving birth, they've been growing since our grandmother's time. They've been fighting, they've been growing business, they've been moving. So, so the modern woman of today is now trying to, to, to is realizing that you know, whatever a man can do, can do. It's high time I woke up and I stood. So we're trying to 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 learn from women who are coming before us. Now Angari Madai, Mata Karua, Charitingilu, uh, the wife to Barack, Michelle Obama, of other Kamala Harris. We're trying to see what they are doing, and now we want to come out bold, like to come out like them, to fill the gaps. But now men are already there. Okay, washa waka mizizi. Because wal- walianza kitambu, sindo tunakuja. So badu kuna yo challenge ya kufitin. Like the space is limited. So what about those women who don't want to have children and they just decide to pursue their careers and then now uh, you have these men come to these women and tell them you're going to grow old alone and die. No man will want you when you're at a high position. I get these men who say they fear a, a, a powerful woman. A woman had like let's say someone like Martha Karua. Mm-hmm. A man might fear. <laughs> you see this one, it's not for kids. Ah, I know this one. <laughs> not this one. Yeah. This and you know we have alpha females. Yeah. And these alpha females are not doesn't mean that they cannot be submissive. It's just that they need space to operate. Mm-hmm. They need some space, freedom and support mm-hmm. to operate. Mm-hmm. And given a st- okay, I don't want to say a strong man because I don't know whether there are weak men and strong men. Mm-hmm. But given a man will understand that kind of a woman, mm-hmm. the woman can submit to that man. So my opinion on women who don't want to give birth and focus on their career, my opinion, because everybody is free to the opinion now. As a woman leader for now for all women, maybe I respect the opinion of not giving birth. Yeah, yeah. They could be having their reasons. But my opinion is if you can give birth, try balance your profession, try balance your career and give birth mm-hmm. and your femininity. If you can give birth, give birth, balance career 
everything in your femininity. Do not forget where you're coming from. You are a woman. At the end of the day, you'll remain a woman. Career will go nowhere. Uh, your profession will go nowhere. Everything that you want to be can go nowhere. If you can give birth, give birth. It gives you the femininity feeling. You know, it's, a, it's something that we cannot explain. But if you don't want to give birth, you want to follow a career, you're still in fight. Okay. You can adopt a chihuahua and you feel company. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you think there are initiatives or programs that support women leadership in Kenya that's already there? Yeah, we have them. Uh, so many of them. How do you even join them? How do you even start that? How do they work? We have actually, I think we have a branch of UN Women in Kenya. I think we have organizations like Oslo Center. Mm -hmm. The Oslo works through political parties. So Oslo Center goes to political parties like um, UDA, ODM, like ODM, UDA, WIPA, whatever, Jubilee. And then it works with the women in those political structures mm -hmm. to empower them. So if there is a young woman watching this, um, they could identify a political party of their choice and join, then strictly join to the Women League, wherever there are women. They'll get to learn about so many organizations who have been supporting those women to achieve their goals. There are so many of them. For now, I can say Oslo Center. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there are so many, but that's the only organization I've worked with before. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about others that I've never worked with before. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, let's say you were born. Okay, let me mm -hmm. phrase this. Mm -hmm. There are these little, little girls. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're not too well off in mm -hmm. life. They like, you know, this part, what they call mm -hmm. sanitary yes, towels. Yes, sanitary towels, yeah. yeah. So, do you think women in Kenya who are leaders, mm -hmm. do you think they have those <coughs> children mostly high school girls mm -hmm. to the point that they just don't go and empower you know there are those people who just go to school just say you're powerful you're going to make it but you know it's not that easy mm -hmm. so do, they, do you feel like women actually do help other women the women leadership they actually help other women here down what down here mm, i feel they do mm -hmm. i feel they do because even by appearing it gives those kids hope, but I feel they are not doing enough somehow. But so they do not like to be judgmental, mm -hmm. but I think somehow they're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. Some could even do it for PR mm -hmm. to be seen that you're a woman and you're advocating for girl child. And now you took pads there. Mm -hmm. Now after you give girls pads, you tell them throw away. <laughs> You draw away and then take photos, you get. And mostly they do this mm. when it's almost election time. Yes, yeah, yeah. The PR. To justify them, they are working mm. and also maybe to attract more donors mm. into their uh, agendas and activities. Mm. But I think this is something very serious. Menstruation is there to stay. Menstruation is not going anywhere. That's a permanent. There's this lady I remember of Parliament who was actually shamed. I know. Yeah, yeah. Of the and then she took up the she ran with the yeah I, the I, issue. Yeah, is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but I think menstruation is there to stay. Uh, and, and what I say um, is, as women leaders or young women wants to support the small kids and girls, when we're taking these parts to the girls because. <laughs> Let's not lie to each other. We will not give them pads <coughs> forever. Yeah. Maybe it could be a one day exercise. Mm -hmm. So while we're there and trying to talk to them on hygiene, uh, on, 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 on hygiene, of course, discipline and career hardware and all that, can we also teach our girls that beyond this kind of life, you have a great future ahead of you and you're going to menstruate forever. And if you're not able to find a solution for your menstruation, do not fall a victim in such a way that you have to, 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 to be so much worried. You're going, uh, you're going borrowing. I hear sometimes even the, okay, I don't use that word because I'll be, uh -huh. but Ukopa village, men take advantage of these girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get them a pad of 50 bob and then to sleep with the girls. You know, and that's so sad. And that's because also we are trying to, we are showing our girls that 
this some this is a thing that you must get a pad for you know for me i like i look at it from the logic perspective even beyond the emotional perspective so while we're giving them the emotional support let's avoid giving them the too much victim point of view mm-hmm. let's teach them that the logic is we're going to menstruate forever you are not in a position to access pads every day maybe can you stay home for the four days i mean if you don't have mm-hmm. can you stay home for four days see how you can handle it just for this a month see how you can handle this situation and once it's done go back to school do not feel like uh, it's something i must deal with and i must go to school and have to borrow like let's teach them to be tolerant in a bit i know women will not like this some women but let's teach girls to be tolerant our girl to be tough you so know I'll ask you yeah we have women representatives yeah uh, in the senate mm-hmm. what's their work if they can't help girls in things like that um sometimes they say a man for their own and it's a fact yeah i mean i like speaking facts that's why some people never agree with me mm-hmm. which is okay but the fact is somehow even if even a senator wants to 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 bring pads to a certain school in a village she won't sustain that forever so unless we there's a time we we, we are championing for some machine that produces a pad at one bob at five shillings so if that machine could be could be um i think if the government can take take this up and see how they can get such a machine that can produce a pad it's like an atm mm-hmm. so there is something we are thinking about it so when a girl puts five bob a pad comes out we have that you get something like that yeah five shillings it comes out i don't know what happened with that idea I'll, i'm gonna get back to my girls and ask them what was the plan because i feel it was something good because a girl will have five shillings yeah. at least she come up with a permanent solution because yeah, yeah. this is a permanent situation so this permanent situation a lot of pr is created around it mm-hmm. a temporary pr yeah. for other people's benefits you get it now can they come through the senate because they have the platform to to advocate for such big issues through the senate and the powers that they have and the connections and the networks can they come up with a permanent solution to a permanent problem rather than these pads for temporary solutions and menstruation is going to stay there i yeah, like maybe chamas to make women raise money yeah which is constant yeah, yeah. and prog- and keeps going yeah, yeah. yeah something permanent so Mm-hmm. as a leader i'm sure you have dreams and where you want to be mm-hmm. what does that mean what does it mean to be a woman yeah this country mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. considering the fact that even when like when you're having periods in parliament men are shaming you they're the first people to call you out and then other women are also silent when other women are being called out for things as natural as that do you think women support other women in politics or in any any leadership uh women support fellow women mm-hmm. but a woman or, or this is not about her mm-hmm. she's actually my friend i'm just saying mm-hmm. but a woman should be conscious mistakes can happen but when a woman is uh, getting to leadership or not even leadership growing mm-hmm. you taught to have a lesson or a scarf mm-hmm. with you in such a way and the hygiene kit well, we have now a pad you yeah. know so or even a panty line or something because you are a woman you must have your package as a woman and there's kile kibawa na sindano in your bag mm-hmm. your hard bag you know because mm-hmm. of anything can happen so i feel the reason as to why a woman in such a situation would feel women never supported mm-hmm. is because we are living in a uh, we are living in um in times of pr a lot of kipindi yeah. mm-hmm. so someone would feel this was a kipindi to achieve something mm-hmm. and someone would also ask a whole woman leader how did you yeah. miss a scarf or a lace in your bag to cover up your mess cuz before it spills that much or if it was not a kipindi when you saw you felt a dot why do you have to stand up and walk showing the cameras yeah. you'd have sat requested for something to cover up yourself yeah. that's what i meant by the picking up the gender card to show that we are women we suffer yeah, this yes. when you come out as a victim you will not manage it in this environment of men mm-hmm. you must come out legal 
withstand organized for you to maneuver because you've come you come like a victim even a fellow woman me i'll beat you technically because now you are a victim already yeah. now you can become a victim yeah, just yeah. Can, women can can women come out strong we like little women yeah <laughs> something like that so uh what's your advice to this young as- aspiring leaders mm-hmm. how would you tell them this is the journey this is my journey personally mm-hmm. so this is what you should expect mm-hmm. and how would you even get there mm-hmm. yeah how would you even advise them? um for the upcoming young leaders yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what you can tell them is to uh, believe in yourself mm-hmm. uh, have a long term plan on whatever you want to achieve mm-hmm. be organized uh do a research of whatever goal you want or whatever business you want to venture in do a research to understand whether your strength can you at least you can do something in such a field and believe in yourself believe in yourself and be consistent and above all be strategic because most of young women lacks okay do, uh, no per se lack strategy but someone comes up with a brilliant idea and because of consistency they never did a research of the long term how to sustain this idea they never did a research around it they end up missing up or even giving up because we are the situation is already hard the system is rigged already so to maintain yourself in that system and on top of the game needs a lot of strategy needs a lot of consistency needs a lot of persistence mm-hmm. needs wisdom so my advice to them is whatever i've just said mm-hmm. let's let them work on that if they work on that ah. so there's no way of letting you go before asking you this uh-huh. uh there's this agenda uh-huh. and that's in the west mostly uh-huh. uh I don't know, I don't know what I should say about it. Yes, same. You, of course, support women, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then they have this agenda where mm-hmm. men now can identify as women. Mm-hmm. And now they end up taking spaces for mm-hmm. women. Remember, we didn't have these this spaces before, mm-hmm. like women in sports. Like in the early days, we didn't have that. Women were always told you belong in the kitchen mm-hmm. and children and kids are for your husband. Now we have now the opportunities. You can compete, you can keep your gun. They're destroying people out there in India. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, in America, the woman of the year that, that got that award is a man mm-hmm. who now identified as a woman. <laughs> I know, I saw that. To actually say what a woman is. Because mm-hmm. now they're saying, I don't know, it's even legal. If that thing comes here, how would you deal with that? Mm, that, 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 that should be dead on arrival. There are leaders, uh, even top people in Kenya, even top lawyers mm-hmm. in Kenya, who say your agenda is yours. Mm-hmm. You, are, you are right. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Um, they say you can, you, can, you can live by your rules. Your agenda, your rules. If you want to be... You want to be in that category of LGBTQ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> feel free because it's you are yeah you know truth. your truth live your truth but for me i am against that because your truth will influence someone you get it mm-hmm. if it is your truth let then don't let us know keep your truth keep your truth in your bedroom mm-hmm. keep your truth in your home mm-hmm. if you wanna if you're a man and you wanna be in a <laughs> you know some nice bralettes in your house do feel free but don't come out here with your makeup do your makeup in the house do not post this on social media if it's your truth it means it's 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 your your thing because i feel when they they bring out their truth to the society it influences other people whose that was not their truth and now they're trying to show how they are westernized or uh, they are modern by borrowing your truth to live up in your truth so i feel it's something wrong for me it is right when it's personal and private if it's their truth for real let's be their truth in private let's not influence upcoming generations let's not bring up a generation of confused young people 
who are confused between am I a male really or a woman because I'm a man in makeup I'm a woman in some kind of dressing code some kind of hairstyle and I have a girlfriend and I'm a woman you know that kind of complication will make our country lose focus we have a lot of serious issues to focus on for our future so let's not complicate all of let's not complicate the situation with unnecessary kind of behavior so those are just bad manners yeah and then now them taking up spaces for women that are exactly now you see because actually this swimmer mm-hmm. uh, used to be i don't know a position like 430 something mm-hmm. when he was a swimmer and a man mm-hmm. and all he goes under some altercations and their laughs and all that mm-hmm. you know he didn't find himself as a woman and now he want he actually went to compete with women in swimming <laughs> he became number one oh wow mm-hmm. actually he tied with a lady mm-hmm. and now they told the lady you're not going to pick up the trophy mm-hmm. they're going to give this guy you know is a woman you know for me the papa says and all that mm. Do you feel that's fair for women? Yeah, it's not fair for women. Mm-hmm. As I told you, we're living in a generation of fab, uh, fake life and publicity, trying to get attention of the world that this happened without being sensitive of now the, the repercussions and the implications and the impact on the generation. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel it's unfair because, um, but still, as I feel it's unfair, why would the women in that contest accept a man funny enough it's women who are pushing this agenda more because women uh, uh because women um judge from the point of emotion yeah if not they became logical they will understand that this is bullshit we are women this is our space this is our match and that makes me wonder what's the use of feminist if now these are the kind of issues that are affecting women where are their voices the voices that are used to claim women deserve jobs women mm-hmm. deserve to work where are they right now because <laughs> these guys are taking up our jobs and the women are just the feminists are confused yeah they they included too much emotions mm-hmm. in their operations yeah and they lost it and now let's go back here mm-hmm. uh there's this rumor as well just what the people say mm-hmm. like women when they get into leadership mm-hmm. and then they get take advantage of by mm-hmm. the male mm-hmm. leaders like if you want this nomination you must sleep with me if mm-hmm. you want this you must give you this you give us Th- do those things happen because now i see you very close with these people i see uh-huh. you baba i see uh-huh. you baba you know mm-hmm. do you think these things happen um i feel uh well since i've not seen anyone i don't have evidence yeah. of someone i know who, who did that mm-hmm. I would say maybe they happen or maybe they don't happen or maybe I'm yet to see mm-hmm. maybe because um if people say maybe it happens but I feel um that's a whole narrative which is being spread by men to get you to get a woman mm-hmm. a man tells you that uh, that person did that to get that mm-hmm. now as ignorant as you are you feel that's the process and now you go so you accept to put yourself in that position mm-hmm. to go through the same position that you f- the um, process that you you feel someone went through to get something mm-hmm. and that's how people get messed up mm-hmm. women get messed up also women unfortunately spread also the same narrative and i feel if a woman has an evidence that happened to another woman then it's good for them But what I tell our my age mates mm-hmm. and upcoming girls is that I don't believe uh sleeping with someone ever took someone far away. And if it ever took someone then far away, they were not able to sustain. It's for example a tree without roots. Mm-hmm. Um I want to use an example of let's say a baobab tree, the big one mm-hmm. and adania kakitu kadogo. So Dania can take a week to grow. Spruits and something we want to get in the market already, but a baobab tree is a tree that has to grow, take years to grow. So for you to pull down, to pluck it down, it will take you another time to do it. It will take you effort, energy and everything. So 
by sleeping around it's like adania mm -hmm. you just approach quickly you successful but you go again you disappear the voice it splashes down but by going through the process you establish stronger roots for you you grow with experience You, you 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 get a lot by growing mm -hmm. and you're gonna be you're gonna sustain yourself up there so if it is a narrative spread by both men and women to mislead the young women to feel now that you have to sleep with someone to get something mm -hmm. and now you'll sleep with someone if they don't give you the something or maybe they give you the something and you cannot sustain and now you turn out to a bitter person You come ranting on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you come ranting, you are a bitter person or even you give up. Because mm -hmm. it's a, you did something for something. It was not for pleasure. Mm -hmm. It was for something. So for me, I advocate for follow you are. Like just go through the process. Be patient with yourself. You're going to get it. Do not listen to people saying how you should sleep with someone to get something. I believe if you come out strong, you're going to get that thing. If they could get it to sleep with you to give it to you, what makes you not to get it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I've learned so much from you today. You're I'm welcome. very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. And wow, well, I don't know what to say. You said the future is bright. The future is bright. You have <laughs> that right. Thank mm. you very much for joining us. Uh, please give us your final remarks and talk to those young ladies mm -hmm. who want to be maybe in position and Hi. Um to the young ladies to the young ladies who would like to join the positions of influence, the positions of power to join politics in a nutshell. My advice to you is um allow yourself to go through the process. Allow yourself to feel the pain of try and error and Um, least but not last, start today. <laughs> you can start anywhere. So you can start today. Start working um, today on whatever you want to become. Work on yourself. Um, do proper research on whatever you want to venture in. And it's going to be successful. So as soon as yesterday, you should have started. Start today. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing this with us. The We Is Podcast. I do not podcast. We support you. Thank you so and much. We cheer for you. Thank you so much. Uh, where can they get you your social media? Um, my Twitter, TikTok, <laughs> Instagram, Facebook. H dot A Rachel Tabida. H -E Rachel Tabida. H -E because I'm the deputy president of the students. You know, they ask me H -E for who. <laughs> It's Hechi because I'm our deputy president for comrades and for students. But Hechi because I believe I want to live up to my dream of becoming an high excellency. So Hechi Rachel Tabida, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. The rest is, I'm not so active. That's awesome. As Thank I you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've been your host, Daya Mushai. You can also follow me on Instagram as underscore Mushai underscore. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>